Yeah, good morning, everybody. Uh, today, I'd like to introduce to you the worldwide creative director of TBWA, Mr. John Hunt. The reason for his visit to Berlin this time is he will launch this book called The Art of the Idea. Uh, this will happen tonight, but you will be the people, the first ones in Germany, who can hear a little bit about his book up front. Um, John, it's called The Art of the Idea. It's not launched yet. Nobody has read it yet. What is the book about? Okay. So um, there were two main reasons why uh, I wanted to do the book. The first was, you know, most of my working life, as with you guys, we were in the business of finding ideas or helping other people find ideas. And uh, when I was a little bit younger, in my 20s, maybe five years ago, um, I thought ideas were just, uh, you know, like lightning. You, know, you work hard, you drink enough coffee, and suddenly you have an idea. Uh, then I discovered uh, there are patterns that come around when you have an idea, and I travel a lot, and I'd be on the plane coming back. And I said, now why did that meeting go well? And I'd make a few notes, and then I'd go, now why did that meeting die? Why was it so horrible? Make a few notes. And no matter where I went in the world, the same patterns emerged. This meeting went well for this reason. These ideas died for the same reasons. So all the book is, is 20 observations of what I've noted of why ideas float and why they sometimes sink. Mm -hmm. um, I read the book up front and I have to say at times I felt quite depressed because you collect all these reasons why ideas could die. So let's say after three quarters of the book, I was left with the impression there's you with your little idea, and then there's this mighty opponent, all these reasons why they could die. What can you tell people who, uh, like me who get depressed after reading? Don't be depressed. <laughs> That's a good okay. It's the exact opposite, really. Um, you have to be realistic, but if you know some of the issues that stop an idea from happening, then you forewarn. So very simply, uh, one of the observations is you get sunrise people and you get sunset people. Sunrise people give off energy and when you're in the business of getting an idea, you like people to be obviously positive. The sunset people suck all the energy away. You know what I mean? mm. So make sure in your meeting you have more sunrise people than sunset people. Uh, sometimes you can determine that, sometimes you can't. But it's very difficult to get an idea through if you come to a meeting and you just feel you know, everyone is, this is not going to happen, and they give you all the reasons why not. So don't be depressed. It's too, there are lots of good reasons why <laughs> ideas happen as well. That's true. Um, but to be optimistic, um, because we, we know we must be honest as well. True. Um, everyone who knows John a little bit better knows he's very calm and friendly and positive, as we've just heard. But nevertheless, sometimes it sounds as if you were a little bit angry mm. about the opposition towards yeah. ideas in there. Is that, is that just my observation? No, no, I think that's a good point. Um, because I think we often, um, the system can work against you uh, for stupid reasons. Uh, and I think, for example, we've made this business of getting an idea much too complicated. The great thing about ideas is they take a complicated thing and make them simple. But then, you often find you have the idea, and then it gets layered with bureaucracy. Um, with maybe research to a degree might be okay, but over-research is crazy. Uh, or the idea works, but there might be a politician uh, in the room who then sabotages the idea because it's not for his or her interest. So the anger is that I think by and large creative people are very um, simple in, in the good sense of the word. We want to do great work, we want to have the best result, but often the marketing machine or the client machine or whatever you want to call it can sometimes for no good reason sabotage things. And that seems to be uh, obviously because these, uh, these apparatus thinks that uh, ideas would be dangerous. Why do you think people think ideas would be dangerous when we love them so yeah. 
it's a crazy thing. Um, if you speak to the clients all around the world, they'll tell you they want a great idea, they want a big idea, they, you know. Um, but the moment you give them, they immediately want to measure it. So sometimes, whoa, we wanted an original idea, but not that original, you know. Um, and then they put lots of measurement on it, which often dilutes it. So you have this strange thing, because you know in a year's time they're going to complain that the campaign you did wasn't as different as they thought it was. And they go, yeah, but you said it. So there is this dichotomy of clients wanting to be different, but being scared. So this book, you could also describe this book as a help, but who would it help more? Creatives who have to come up with ideas all the time, or the risk-averse clients? Who, who did you aim it? You know, I aimed it at bad marketing. I aimed it at no one. I aimed it at everyone. <laughs> um, if you find it interesting, read it. It's not for creatives or for clients. It's not even just for advertising people. I think, you know, and, um, having an idea belongs to everybody. And one of the uh, other reasons I wanted to do the book was to get rid of this nonsense that ideas have a hierarchy. So only senior people can have senior ideas. Um, or important people have important ideas. We find all around the world now, it's often the younger people you know, that have the better ideas. Uh, the older guys can shape it a bit, but anyone can have an idea. It doesn't belong in the creative department. It doesn't belong in uh, age restriction, a color, a country. And all the best campaigns we've created recently have generally been a whole mix of people. So I also want to make it clear there's no hierarchy for ideas. You don't need an MBA, you just gotta have a good idea. <laughs>